All right, so today we're going to be doing a miniature lesson together, working on just a small design together. And the point of doing this is that uh, you guys will be practicing a lot of the techniques that I've gone over in um, the videos that came before this one, but you'll be uh, practicing them all kind of at once on one design. And so that hopefully will strengthen your ability to really use these techniques. Okay. So, um, at the end of this, you will have made a little house like this with an open door on it and picket fence around the whole thing, okay? So let's get rid of this and start from scratch. All right, first things first, let's bring out a tube. So if you scroll down in basic shapes, you will find the tube shape, bring that out. And we're using a tube shape because it's already hollow in the middle. If we were to use a box, we would have to spend a, a long time hollowing out the middle of the box so that we can get our walls that we can cut uh, doors and windows out of. But with a tube shape, you see this sides slider right here? And by the way, a lot of these shapes have a lot of different sliders that will really change the way the shape looks. But this side slider, if I slide this all the way down, the smallest amount we can get is three, but we actually want four sides here. And it can be kind of hard to get exactly four, so you can also just click on the number and type in the number four if you want to. And by the way, it's important to get our, uh, view to be the exact same thing. So our home view right here, making sure that we're looking at it from the actual front, right? When we first start, um, that's very important to make sure that we're on the same page. So go ahead and hit your home view to make sure you're looking at it from the front. And then let's actually hit this button or let's press F and that will zoom us right in on the front of it. Okay. Now the front of this uh, right now is actually the corner right? It's like a diamond shape right now. And I don't want that. I want the flat front to, to face the front of it. And there's a reason for that. Um, it would mess things up when we start to bring in our roof and everything else. Those would all be facing the wrong way. Okay. So we don't want to do that. So first things first, let's rotate this thing. And we rotate it with this rotation handle right here. We can just grab that. And first we want to hold down shift. So I'm holding down shift and then I'm grabbing and rotating this. And we're just rotating it by 45 degrees. There we go. Shift and grab it to rotate. All right. Now we can bring out a roof. Uh, what you need to do is put a work plane on top of this because if you brought out a roof right now, the roof would just be on the floor, right? And we don't want that. We want the roof to come out and be right on top of it. So I'm pressing W for work plane and I'm clicking on top of this thing. Make sure you don't accidentally click on the side of it. That would look like this. We wanna be clicking on the top of the walls. And then let's bring out a roof. And we don't even need to line the roof up perfectly with the top. We can be kind of sloppy with it because here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to put my work plane back on the ground. And to do that, just press W and then click anywhere in empty space like that. And now let's draw a selection box around these. And let's press L for a line. And let's just click this middle dot here on the floor and this middle dot here on the floor. And then line them up. Remember, you don't want to click these ones top to bottom usually because it'll just mess them up in various ways. Okay, so let me hit undo on that. Undo is also control Z if you never knew that. And to redo, it's control shift Z. Okay, by the way, you can see my shortcuts down here in the corner. All right, so we've got our roof. It is lined up perfectly on top of the walls of our house. So that is all good. So we're going to go ahead and group these together to make sure that they stay together. But first things first, let's change the colors of these to something kind of cool. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys go in and change your colors to whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to make the best colors on earth because I want you guys to make better colors than me. Once you have your color selected, now we can group these together. So we'll draw a selection box around this. And by the way, and I've taught you this before, but let me remind you, you can draw just the tiniest little selection box. And as long as it touches both of them, right? So I'm clicking an empty space, drawing a tiny little box. As long as that tiny little selection box touches uh, all the objects we want to select, they all get selected. So let's hit group. And there we go. Now look, we've lost our colors, okay? Um, to get our colors back, we click on the color button and we click on multicolor here, the rainbow button. And there we go, we got our colors back, right? All right, now we need to put a um, chimney on top of this, okay? So let's go ahead and press W 
for work plane and put a work plane on the side of the roof. You can choose which side of the roof you want your chimney to be on. I'm going to do the left side here. And I'm actually going to bring out another tube again. Okay? Because I want my roof to um, be hollow in the middle. All right? And I kind of want to change the sides of it. Um, using a tube shape lets us really customize it. So first things first, this needs to be a lot longer. Let's make this thing 30 millimeters long, like that. And then let's hold down shift. Let's hold down shift and grab that same top white dot. And let's shrink this guy down until it's kind of the right size for the house. Um, if you want to copy off me, mine was five millimeters by the time I shrunk it all the way down. Okay, now let's change this in a couple different ways. I'm going to make my sides of my tube four again. So it's kind of a square shape. And I'm going to do a few other things. I'm going to turn this bevel up here. And what bevel does is it um, kind of creates a softer edge around the top of it like that, okay? So that just gives it a little bit more character. It makes it a little bit more complicated of a shape, um, and it makes it look a little bit nicer, okay? So there's my roof. And you know what I'm going to do? The last thing I'm going to do, and if you guys haven't noticed this yet, you can lift things up or down off a work plane with this black arrow, this cone-shaped arrow. But I'll tell you something, an easier way to do it because a lot of times it's really easy to miss this when you're trying to grab it and you accidentally grab something else and mess everything up. An easier way to move stuff up and down is to hold down control and use your up and down arrow keys, okay? So I can hold down control and press down once and now it's buried into the roof of my house a little bit. There we go, and that's perfect. I like the way that looks. All right, so let's keep moving. We've already got um, our walls, a roof, and a chimney. Let's make the door. So I'm going to bring out a box shape. I'm actually going to kind of make a fancier door that's got a rounded top to it. So to do that, I need to bring out a box shape, put a work plane on top of it, and then bring out a round roof to put on top of that. Okay, there we go. Now let's group these together so I can draw a little selection box that touches the whole thing, and let's hit group. And this time, we want it all to be one color. That's a good thing. So I'm going to make mine brown like a nice wooden door and and by the way you want your um door to be kind of close to your house like mine is because when we hold down shift and grab this top white dot to shrink this down it'll be a little bit easier to tell exactly how large our door is going to be in front of our house okay once we've done that let's move it over in front of our house and just check on it and see if that's kind of the right size i feel like mine's still a little bit too large so i'm going to shrink it down to seven. So I've held down shift, grabbed that same top white dot, and I shrunk it down to be seven millimeters tall, okay? And in my opinion, that's about the perfect size. Now, don't worry about making this thinner right now. In fact, we don't want to do that. We want to leave this nice and thick, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, uh, but first things first, let's align this. Let's line this up um, to the center of the house. So even if, you know, let's pretend it was a bit sloppy right now, do we group this yet? We have not. Oh man, that could have been a disaster. So um, watch what I do, guys. Let's let's fix this problem. We need to group the uh, chimney with the rest of the house first. So let me hide the door because we don't want to accidentally group the door right now. Here's how you hide it. You see this little uh, light bulb button here? We click that and that hides the door. And now we can select this whole thing and group it. First things first though, make sure your chimney is on a place on your roof that you want it to be. If it's not, you wanna first put a work plane back where it was on the roof, cause then you can move it with your arrow keys to where you want it to go, okay? And let's say I want mine to be right about there. Um, and the other thing you should do is make your chimney whatever color you want it to be. My chimney's really ready now and I can group it with the rest of my house. So again, I can just draw a little selection box that touches all of this and hit group or press control G to group it. All right, now that's all grouped together. Now we can continue working on our door. If you want to see things that you hid before, see every object that was hidden, that button's right here. It's the show all button. So I can click that and my door is back. Now I can line that up with the front of the house. Before, if we had aligned everything before, it would have smashed the roof into the center of the house too, and we didn't want to do that. So now we can hit the align button or press L for align, and these same dots come up, right? 
we want this dot in the front here, this middle dot in the front, and that puts it right in the front of our house. If we hit this middle dot on the side, that would actually put our door in the middle of our house, and we don't want that. So let me hit Control Z to undo. Okay, cool. So now we know it's right in the middle of our house. Perfect. Now we are actually going to duplicate this door, and I will show you why in a second. Let's duplicate the door, which is Control D, or you can hit this button right here, Control D for duplicate. And I'm going to use my down arrow here to move that door out of the way, okay? I just want one copy of the door to stay out of the way for now, okay? Now this copy of the door that's still in the house, I'm going to turn that into a hole shape. We've used hole shapes before, uh, although maybe you didn't see it on video before. So what we can do if we take this hole shape and group it together with the rest of the house. So let me draw a selection box that's touching the whole shape and the walls. If we group this together with the rest of the house, it will punch a hole in the house. Look how nice that looks, okay? So now we've got a hole for our door to live in. Now we can go back to this door. So let's click on it and let's go ahead and press F to focus on it. F means focus, or you can also hit this button right here to focus, okay? And let's make our door thinner. It does not need to be this darn thick. So I want my door to be one millimeter thick. That's the perfect number. If you can't quite get one millimeter, if it's just not working for you, you can always click on the number right there and just type in one and hit enter. Okay, that is it. So now, remember, we had already aligned this to the center. So don't grab and drag this with your mouse because it's pretty likely that you'll accidentally mess it up. Better thing to do than grabbing and dragging it is just use your up arrow on your keyboard. I'm hitting up, up, up until it gets to where it needs to go. Oh no, it's kind of out of my view. What do I do? I just press F again and it will focus on it. Okay, just like that. So looking around at it, it's still kind of out of the door a little bit. So let's move it back. Now, why would we bother making a hole for the door if we're just going to cover the entire hole, right? So let's rotate this thing a little bit to make it look like it's kind of open. Okay, I'm going to leave it up to you. Do you want your door to be wide open or do you want your door to only be open a little bit? Um, I'm going to make my door open a little bit, like 33 degrees. And now look, if I focus in on this and I look at it, it's not quite right, right? I need to use my arrow keys to sort of move it around and get it where it needs to go. Here's the thing, though. When we're working with objects that are this size, this small, it can be hard to move things to exactly where you want them to go. I don't know if you guys have noticed that yet, but sometimes it can be very difficult to move things exactly where you want them to be. That's because of this right down here. You see this in the corner? It says snap grid 1.0 millimeters. And what that means is whenever you move something or change the size of something, it moves or changes it by one millimeter at a time. And we want to make that number smaller so we can move things by a smaller amount at a time. So I'm going to change mine to 0.25 millimeters. That's typically small enough. If you really want to go small, you can change it to 0.1. Now I can really kind of move it exactly where I want it to go. I'm going to move mine front and back a little. I'm going to move mine side to side a little. And there we go. That's about as perfect as I want it to be. Okay, we can kind of see inside the house. We've got our door. It is all good. That looks good to me. Okay, so um, the way we made doors, right, with a hole shape, you could do the exact same thing to make windows. You make a whole uh, shape a whole shape. You shrink it down to where you want it to be. The shape needs to actually go through the wall, okay? So you could hold down control and press the down arrow until it's actually going through the wall. And then um, we could do things like align it to make sure it's all lined up. And then if I group this have a nice circle shape window in the side okay that's kind of a funky shape to use for a window but i sort of like it i could even then take and make like a little cross inside of this right if you want to make that kind of a detail but i will leave that up to you okay um i'm gonna now that i've done this right now that i've done this i might as well keep it but let me make it a little bit nicer i'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit more because i think it was a little too big and now that i have one why don't i just duplicate it Control d to duplicate and whoops, let me hit undo because I moved that the wrong way. Hold down control and use my down arrow and just hold down the down arrow until it goes through the other wall. And so now if I group all this together, let's just draw a selection box around it and group the whole thing together. The door will group to the front and I'll have two windows in the sides. Nice. Okay. Got my windows, got my door. All right. Awesome. 
So uh, let's make a door handle for the front of the door. To do that, let's put a work plane on the front of the door like this. I'm pressing W and clicking. And by the way, guys, let's make sure to kind of reset and so let's let's hit F to focus on the house and let's zoom in, right? And we can really see the door. We've put our work plane on the front of the door, W and click on the front of the door. And now let's start to make our, um, our handle for the door. Uh, last time I made a more complicated handle, but let's keep this simple this time. Let's take a cylinder and like we did before, let's add a bevel to this. Let's add a nice rounding bevel like that. You see what it's doing? It's, it's kind of shaping the edges of it. Okay, to give it more of a door handle shape. And we can turn up the sides. The cylinder by default is kind of rough looking, but if we turn the sides up, it will get smoother and smoother. As our cylinder has more and more sides, it will start to look more and more round, okay? Let me turn the bevel up even more. There we go. And if I want, I can turn up the segments on my bevel to add more segments to it. I don't really want that though. I, I like the way it looked before. So I'm gonna keep my segments at one. All right, so feel free to pause and copy my settings if you want. Now, this is obviously way too big, right? And a door handle is not usually quite this tall from side to side like that. So I'm gonna grab this white dot. I'm gonna flatten this thing down a little like that till it starts to look more like a real door handle. And let's go ahead and change the color of it. I'm gonna make mine a nice silver color. And now we can finally shrink this thing down. So like always, when we're doing a shift scale, we hold down shift and grab the white dot and we can shrink this thing down and let's go ahead and press f to focus on it so we can see what we're doing i'm going to zoom back out a little and we can use our arrow keys to move this to where we want it to be on our door just using our arrow keys cool um it's still kind of big but i think it's okay but maybe i'll hold down shift again and shrink it down just a little bit more and there we go perfect perfect Okay, I use my arrow keys to move it around to where I want it to be. I held down shift and shrunk it down. I've got my snap grid at 0.1, so I can change it by a little bit at a time and I could really get it perfect. And there we go. Let's go ahead and put our work plane back down on the ground. And before we do anything else, let's draw a selection box around all of this and go ahead and hit group on it again. Okay, control G to group. All right, this is all grouped together, so I can like grab this thing and move the whole thing around, and I know it's not gonna fall apart on me. I can't accidentally mess it up, okay? I could change the size of it, shrink it down. I could turn it upside down if I want, and it's all gonna stay together, okay? But don't do that. I was just demonstrating that to you, okay? That's the power of grouping, is that it keeps everything together for you, so you don't have to worry about it. All right, let's hit the home button, so we kind of have a bird's eye view, and then let's hit F to focus on it. And let's start to make our um, our picket fence. So let's make the first picket for our picket fence. A picket fence is just a square shape on bottom and a roof shape on top, kind of like how we made the house. But I know from experience, I actually want to make this square shape larger first before I bring the roof out. Oh, by the way, to make our lives easier again for right now, let's change our snap grid back to one millimeter because it's just gonna make this these next couple steps a little bit faster and easier for us. So I'm gonna grab the white dot on top of the box and let me press F to focus on it. Grab the white dot on top of the box and I'm gonna make it taller to about 40. And now I can bring, whoops, what do I gotta do first? I gotta put a work plane on top of it. W for work plane. And now I've put a work plane on top of the box and I can bring a roof out right on top of the box, right? Um, if I want to, if I'm not confident that they're perfectly on top of each other, then I can select them both. Make sure you don't accidentally select the house, just select these and I can press L to align them. But look at mine. Um, let me do that again. Press L to align them. Look, do you see how all these dots are grayed out? They're grayed out because I can't click them and they're grayed out and I can't click them because everything is already perfectly in the center. So I can rest assured that this is perfect. And when I group it, it will become one nice solid looking shape. I don't see any kind of line or seam between these. And now I can just make this white, like a white picket fence and shrink it way, way down. There we go. Um, let's move this a little bit closer to the house. Let's go ahead and focus on it. 
so that we can see how big it's going to be. That's going to be a little too big. That's kind of covering up my house a little bit too much. So I held down shift again and I shrunk mine down until it was seven millimeters tall. And that looks just about right to me. So remember, I did a 40 millimeter tall box with a roof on top. I grouped it together, changed the color, and then I shrunk the whole thing down while holding down shift until it was seven millimeters tall. Okay, now it's way too thick, right, from front to back. So let's do the same thing we did with the door and just make this one millimeter thick from front to back. And again, if you're only trying to change things in one direction at a time, change the size of something in one direction at a time, um, you should use the black dots. Don't use the white dots on the corner because while you're trying to change it from front to back, you could accidentally be changing it from side to side too. Okay, so when you only want to change something in one direction at a time, that's what the black dots are for. So make sure you're using those. Okay. All right. So this thing's perfect. It is seven millimeters tall. It is one um, millimeter thick and it is 2.8 millimeters wide. Okay. So if you want to copy my measurements exactly, um, that's what they are. All right. We've got our first um, piece of fence. And so what we can do now is we can use duplicate to duplicate these things and make a bunch of them. So let me hit control D and I'm going to use my arrow keys to move this over to the side. I did three clicks and look, I've got a nice little gap between them. That's what I want. I want a little bit of a gap between them so I can see them. Now, if, if you click off of this, if you deselect it, you have broken the spell. If I try to keep duplicating this or whatever, it will not continue to make a nice pattern of them and place them in a row for us anymore because I clicked off of it and broke the spell. So let me start over. I duplicate it. I move it over and then I don't touch anything. I don't click off of it. It's still selected. And now I can just hit duplicate over and over or press hold down control and press D over and over and it will duplicate it as many times as I want. And let me zoom out and kind of see what I'm doing. I want my yard to be kind of big, not super big, but kind of big. So I've duplicated it, I don't know, maybe a dozen times, maybe 15, okay? I've got my whole front of the fence, one side of my fence. Um, that thing is ready to go. So now what I wanna do is select this all without selecting the house. I could do this in a couple ways. If it's easiest for you to do it this way, you can hide the house real quick. So press that same light bulb button and then you can just make a selection box around this, all of this and group it. And we have now grouped it together so we, we won't accidentally mess it up when we're moving it around, okay? Or what I also could have done, if you look at your design all the way from the very top, right? We rotate our camera until we're looking at it from the very top. Then it's, it's a lot easier to select things without accidentally selecting anything behind them. Okay, so that's another way to do it without having to hide stuff, okay? All right, so anyways, we've, we've grouped our fence, so we can now move that all around without accidentally messing it up. And let's go ahead and select everything here. We can select everything. By the way, there's another way to select uh, everything, select all, and that is Control A. If I hit Control A, it selects everything in my design. And now I can press L or hit this button for a line. If I click this dot in the middle, there we go. It's all aligned together. Perfect. So now we know our house is perfectly in the center behind um, this picket fence. Now I've got just my picket fence selected. Let me duplicate that. And let's rotate it by 90 degrees. So I'm holding down shift and grabbing this rotation handle here, rotating it by 90 degrees. And I'm going to use my arrow keys to move it over to one side. So I'm using, I'm just holding down my arrow keys to move it over to one side. Let me press F and really zoom in with my middle mouse button. And now I can really kind of see what I'm doing. And let me just get this looking as good as I can in terms of where my corner's at. I could maybe do that. Yeah, I sort of like that, the way that corner looks. It's up to you the way you want your corner to look here, but just make sure that you really zoom in on it and get it looking right. And I'm just using my arrow keys to kind of perfectly get it put into place, right? Until it's just right. There we go. So now that that's done, um, watch what happens if I duplicate this now. You don't want to do this. What it did was it flipped it around and stuff for me again, but I didn't want that to happen, right? So this time I actually want to, on purpose, before I duplicate, I want to click off of it and deselect it because that will break the spell and then that won't happen, okay? So now if I click this one on the side, I can duplicate it, control D, and I can use my arrow keys and I'm just holding down the left arrow key for this. 
and moving it until it looks perfect on the other side. There we go. I'm zooming in on the corner to check it, and that looks perfect to me. So there we go. I've just like that, that easily, I've got a whole second side of the fence. And now I will select the front part of the fence and do the same thing again. Duplicate. And this time I'm holding the up arrow and moving it to the back. There we go. I think this is a little too far, so let me use my arrow key to move it over. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. That's nice. And I already like kind of where my house is um, in the yard, okay? I've got kind of more of a backyard than a front yard, which is normal, right? So um, if I wanted to, I could, I could really line this, you know, try to line this up and make it right in the center of the thing, or I can just use my arrow keys to move it around. But I think that's good. I'm happy with that. Now, the last thing I want to do is to create a gate in the front of this. So how do we how do we make a gate? This thing this whole thing is grouped together already, right? Let me hit undo cuz I just accidentally moved that. By the way, undo is your best friend when you're working on stuff like this. If you mess something up, if you mess something up like, "Oh no, I grabbed the wrong dot and I completely, you know, changed the size of this. I didn't want to do that." Instead of having to grab that dot again and trying to get it perfect, you know, and and not really being able to ever get it back the way you used to, just hit undo. The undo button is up here, and it's also control Z, right? That's the shortcut for it. I've hit undo, and now I'm back to normal. I don't need to worry about spending two minutes fixing it. Okay, anyways, let's make this gate. So, I want to ungroup, ungroup just this front. I don't need to ungroup everything. I've just got the front part of the fence selected, and here's the ungroup button up here, and the shortcut for it is control shift G. Control shift and G. Now it is ungrouped. Okay, so now I can select, let's just select these three slats right in the middle here. So I'm just going to draw a selection box. I'm, I'm drawing my selection box kind of from the bottom, so I know I'm not going to touch the house. And it's just touching these three, and when I let go, those three are selected. By the way, another way to select multiples of something is to click on one of them, and now hold down shift and click all of the other ones that you want. Okay, so that's another way besides drawing a selection box to select multiple things is holding down shift and clicking. Okay, all right, I've got all three of these selected. Let me go ahead and group them so I know I won't accidentally mess them up. I've hit group on them so they're all one piece now. And now I can do the same thing I did last time. Let me grab this rotation handle. And by the way, do you notice how when I'm trying to grab the rotation handle, the number is getting in the way? That can kind of be a pain in the butt. That can kind of be tough. Um, to get rid of. Sometimes zooming, zooming way out or zooming way in helps, um, but sometimes it's just kind of in your way, okay? So what we can do, though, is we can actually, since that number keeps insisting on getting in my way, let me just click on it, and let me just type in the number I want. I liked 33 last time, but you know what? This time, I really want my fence to be a lot more open, so I'm going to do negative 70. There we go. It's going to be a lot more open once I use my arrow keys and move it over to where I want it to be. And look, I can't get it quite right right now. So what do I need to do so that I can move it to where I actually want it to be? Because I can't, I'm, I've either got a gap here or it's smashing into the rest of the fence. So what do I got to do? I got to go back down to snap grid. Let's change our snap grid again to like 0.1. And now I can use my arrow keys and really get this where I want it to be. Perfect. There we go. That is nice. So remember the snap grid, because it is nice to be able to go back and forth between the really little numbers and the bigger numbers, okay? In fact, sometimes I like to set it to 5 millimeters, because I know I want to move things by a really large amount at a time, okay? So the snap grid is your friend. Remember about it. Cool. So there's my fence. If I wanted to, I could make some kind of, like, um, handle for the front of this fence, right? I would put a work plane on it. And I don't know what kind of handle to use. Maybe I would use like a tube shape and make it kind of a round handle on the front. Um, but that that's starting to get really complicated, so we won't worry about that right now. Um, I really like the way this looks. If you want to do grass or something like that, there's a million different ways to do grass. Um, the other thing you guys could do to customize your design here, if I really focus in on this part of the uh, chimney and put a work plane on the very top of the chimney, I could pretty easily start to make some smoke. I could either duplicate a bunch of spheres and make kind of bubbly looking smoke coming out of the chimney, or I could use the scribble tool and kind of scribble some smoke. Let me try to show you guys this. It's actually going to be facing the wrong way once I do it. You guys could probably do better than this if you tried. All right, but there's my smoke. It's not the best looking thing on earth. 
when you're done with the scribble tool, you can hit done here in the corner. And look, it's the wrong, it's facing the wrong way. So I'm pretty sure if I just hold down shift and rotate this by 90 degrees that way, and then here's the other rotation handle I want, rotate it by 90 degrees that way. Now it's at least facing the right way. And so now we need to shrink it down. So I'm holding down shift again, and shrinking it down and it's buried inside the house now. So how did I lift things up? I held down control and I use the up arrow. Hold down control, hold down the up arrow, and let's bring this thing back up. There we go. So now I can really use my arrows and put my smoke where I want it to be, right in the middle of the chimney. That wasn't so hard, okay? You just gotta remember all the techniques. Holding down shift to, uh, to, to help you rotate something holding down shift to help you shrink something and make it shrink uh, nice and cleanly, right? Using control and an arrow key to lift things up or put it down um, away from the work plane, right? Um, so that as long as you remember all your techniques, it's not too hard to really do anything. Any of the details you might wanna do, as long as you remember in your techniques, whether they're work planes, holding down shift or your other keyboard shortcuts, um, or using duplicate to make a repeating pattern. Remember in techniques makes things so much faster and makes your life so much easier. Here's our design. We have made a house with uh, two windows, a door, smoke coming out of a chimney, and a picket fence around it uh, with a gate um, in the picket fence. This looks great. I'm super happy with it. Um, and I hope you guys like yours as much as I do. Now, what you have to do uh, for the end of this is just take a screenshot of it. I want you to get some of the fence in the picture, especially the gate, so I can see you made your gate. But just, I want you to zoom in like this, right? So I can really see the details of the house. So don't worry about zooming out far enough to get the whole thing in the, in the screenshot. Okay, zoom in so I can see the details. Okay, cool. And then take a screenshot of this, um, which by the way is on a uh, Chromebook. It's you hold down control and press that weird looking key that is like um, a square with two lines next to it. It is control, control button, and that button. The square with, with uh, two lines next to it. Cool, that's how you take a screenshot in Chromebook. And that will show up in your downloads folder and then you can send it to me so I can see how you did. All right, very cool. Have fun making your house and I can't wait to see them.